as I'm uh, kicking my foot in, and then it would get hooked, and I just fall in. Right? It was a total shockmaster moment, but not live on TV. Uh, Anyways, um, so '94, I was just working, trying to figure out what I really wanted to do, and I was uh, getting leads on, you know, independent wrestling, how you get there, because people were telling me you got to go to acting school, you got to go to this. People that didn't have any knowledge of wrestling, they just assumed, and I'm like, well, acting school, how do I find that? So I was kind of doing my research for about a year until I found a school, and then I committed to the school, and and uh, I'll never forget stepping in the ring the very first time and i don't know if you guys remember that but i almost it felt like you were walking you know you were walking into your home it really did it was just a weird feeling i don't know if i was just because i was such a, a fan as a kid you know and you're jumping in there and that's probably i what i assume um that's why i got that feeling like a real wrestling ring it was a shitty one uh -huh. don't get me wrong <laughs> yeah but, <laughs> So, but yeah, no, my first just... one was in a basement. I mean, you know, everybody has their own, you know, kind of same type stories, yeah. you know, but it was, it, you're right. It was the first time you get in there, you just think, this is cool. I want to learn everything I can. Yeah. I want to do everything. Yeah. I, it was, you, you, as soon as you get in there, you just start thinking of all the things you'd seen on television that you wanted to do right at that point. You know, you, yeah. you don't want to learn how to take a bump. You don't want to do a headlock and hit the ropes 84,000 times and do <laughs> 500 Hindu squats. You just right. can't, you want to do the iron claw. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I did an iron claw. Um, it was a stomach claw. I'll never forget. I don't know why I did it, whether it was a rib or something. <laughs> and uh, I think I was working the guy's midsection, you know. Uh, you know, he'd come off the ropes, hit him, bear hug, all that stuff. And then I did a, a claw to the stomach. I don't know why. It was, it was over in Germany in Bremen. And Mick, <laughs> the uh, referee, he goes, Rhino switch it up because nobody was reacting to it i'm like give it time <laughs> give it yeah time. yeah yeah <laughs> so but yeah that was the whole that's, gotta that's, get how, over. that's how the old school they're giving time right john <laughs> that's right <laughs> you know i, I think not... fred's i think fred's actually used the iron call like on the stomach and even on the hamstring at one time really you know, he used it on a big muscle you know and then, then he yeah. the head was the one that was the easiest most visual to to do it yeah uh, yeah uh, no, it was uh that was the last but if, time. But I'd if Mick would have been there, he probably would have told Fritz, Fritz, go to the head. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how great was Mick? He was awesome. His wife Wendy and him, they would play cards outside their caravan. And and uh it was great when I seen you in TNA. We we're catching up on a lot of that yeah. uh overseas and CWA and all Mick, that. Mick had a beer mug that you could put like six beers in. And yeah. it, was, it was like massive with those big German mugs. And he yeah. sat outside his caravan. And I, I, my caravan was right next to his in Vienna. So I, I live right by him. And he go, just having one beer today, Big John, just one beer. <laughs> of course, he'd fill it up 18 times, but it's just one beer. <laughs> oh. it's, uh, do you remember the rib they would play on the boys? They would throw bread and stuff and seeds on top of their caravans and uh, yes. the seagulls. Oh, and God. Uh, Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah go into that. That sounds great, rib. Go. I've never heard that. So go into the details on that. I like to hear it. You know what was funny? Because you heard that, right? And it's like, oh, this is a rib they play over here, and you know, it's a fun, harmless rib. They got this uh, guy from Australia, Mark the Hunter. That's what his name was over there, and a uh, nice guy. But this guy, he would come in. It was like he was sleep deprived. Like he hasn't slept in days. And he goes like this. He goes, uh, yeah, these birds just keep on dancing on top of my trailer and they're walking around. They're just keeping me up at night. And and then someone told me they were ribbing them. Like, I'm like, man, that sucks, you know? And, and then someone did that to me. And believe it or not, it's so loud inside the caravans. And uh, I'm just like, those mother <laughs> effers, right? But by then, you know, every, all the new guys learned that rib, you know? So so it only happened to me one night, but like for two weeks, two or three <laughs> weeks, and then he smartened up, you know? So, um, but yeah, he was just like dragging ass coming in and just, 
Yeah, it was he was he was definitely sleep deprived, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. had been there. You know, those guys had all been there for so long. Some have been in there the same territory for 20, 30 years. All these yeah. little, all the new American talent would come in and think they they know things. They got yeah. ribbed incessantly. It yeah. was it was constant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and it was uh I I mean, I just wish something like that was around because you're in the same town. For anywhere from 30 to 60 days and you just learn off the guys you know so you were there you had left like a year or two prior to uh me getting there and and uh yeah it was just uh it was just a lot of really fun times and good that, memories that's too. what i that's what i used I, i'd ask john all the time you guys had to be excellent psychologist to get in the ring every night in the same town you know and, and work work you know you had to work or return and, and and work with these guys i mean you know we we you know we, our our routine you know, work with a guy maybe once a month you know and in, in the same town you know work with it and then maybe we work a town we come back a month but you guys were there but that had to be uh, at what stage of your career were you in that and you had to it had to be a spawn to just learn so much doing that yeah well i was uh two and a half years into um into my professional wrestling career and uh yeah so i mean for me it was just like you know i went over for a championship match and i did really well and auto wanted to bring me back for the rest of the tour couldn't get me to vienna so um hanover and brayman but yeah it was just it was one of those things where you know such early on i'm working with fit finley um that's after he went to wcw and came back i thought fit was going to kick my ass it was like the first um or no that like the second night of the tour the first night i worked the singles match the second night i worked the tag match and i think i might have told you this story but uh bradshaw but you know the the turnbuckles were like a boxing turnbuckle right yeah so the, every night they would end with a tag match so the second night, it was like the first match, my match was okay. You know, I mean, two months prior, I had a great championship match with Franz, which got me back for the rest of the season, starting in Hanover. And then, you know, my first match was okay. The second match, you know, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't like great. Um, you know, so now I'm in there with Fit. And uh, so like the turnbuck or the uh, tag rope, it was just one big circle so they just go in there and flip it to you know because they had to put the tag ropes up quick you know for the tag match so i i got tagged in fit started he tags me in and i throw the tag rope over and as i go to get in the ring my foot hooks on the tag rope and i fall in the ring and fits huh. holding the guy and fits uh um uh he goes uh case of beer so i'm like okay this really sucks you know the crowd's laughing they're kind of and i'm mean and all this <laughs> stuff and you know in the parades and so my character is really mean and aggressive you know like it is so anyways uh so finley um he tags me and i trip i fall this and that so then uh you know in finley i see him chewing up guys right so i'm like man this guy's really mean i hear the stories and stuff breaking the thumbs <laughs> and and he but he was always nice so then i tag out and then he tags me in and then Finley tags me and I go to get in again and I do the same thing. And I'm like, oh, he's just <laughs> going to drop the guy and start just kicking the shit out of me. Right. Finley, I'm like, like, how embarrassing. Right. So and he goes two cases of beer. I'm like, OK, so you don't want to kick my ass. So then the third time I figured out what I did when I threw the tag rope in, it would bounce off the turnbuckle and pop up as I'm <laughs> kicking my foot in. And then it would get hooked and I just fall in, right? It was a total shock master moment, but not live on TV. Uh, so anyways, uh, so the third time he tagged me in, I throw the, um, or no, I just drop it. I walk down halfway down the ring and kick my foot in the opposite way. So, and then I didn't have any more cases of beer that, that match. 